Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 40. Thank you for joining us for Black Entrepreneur Experience. This is where we shine the light on the most successful Black entrepreneurs in the world. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards, and I am so honored today to have with us Dewan Burns. She is known as a celebrity stylist, a weave master. She's the owner of the DeGlam Shop, which is a salon on wheels based in the D.C., Maryland, and the Virginia area. Welcome, Dijon. Hello, how are you? I'm perfect. How are you doing? I am fine today. It's hot outside here. Say it again. I said it's a little warm out here, but I'm great. Absolutely. Yeah, we've been hitting the 113, 117 temperatures in Vegas. So I definitely understand the heat. You know what? I've given our audience a very brief snippet about you and your company, Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you would like them to know about you and your company? What have you told them so far? I don't know. I mean, just start from the beginning. (laughs) Whatever you desire them to know about your company and yourself. Okay. So my name is Dewan Burns. I am a hairstylist and nail technician in the metropolitan area, which is Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. I'm also licensed in Georgia and Arizona. I um, am the first um, black woman to start a mobile salon on the East Coast, I think. I'm not really sure if if there's um, anyone on the West Coast, but I've started a mobile salon. I do have a physical location, which is located right here in Oxon Hill, Maryland, where I live. And I use the mobile salon to travel as far as I can go to glamorize my clients. Tell us, Dewan, what made you decide to start a salon on wheels? Is there a great demand for that? Um, I think it is. I actually used to go to my clients in my car. And I would go into their home, but sometimes um, situations would not allow me to be able to accommodate the the client like I wanted to. So I thought about um, the way, a way to bring the salon to them, which would have water and electricity, which was an RV. So I took an RV and I gutted it out and I turned it into a mobile salon. So it actually has a shampoo bowl. Um, it has electricity, it has water, you have a table for your nails, um, um, makeup, anything um, that the salon offers, I can do that in the truck. So Dewan, share with us, with the audience, how did you decide about your business and how did you know that your business was going to be successful? How did I decide about the business? Well, I actually used to, I, I actually taught school for seven years and I've always liked doing hair and I wanted to own a salon at the time. I didn't know that I was going to actually start doing hair and um, until I, I, I went to school and then I said, well, if I own a salon, I would want to know how to do the services for the clients. And then I decided who that I would actually be in there behind the chair doing hair. So that's how that came about. So when you say that you actually taught, were you teaching in the classroom in terms of cosmetologists or cosmetology or were you teaching as in like a elementary school teacher? I taught first grade um, and I also taught seventh grade special education. And I did teach at the hair school I attended for about a year before I started my own salon, opened my own salon. Okay. So, Dewan, share with our audience about success. How do you personally define success? Um, how do I personally? You have to, you have to be uh, consistent. You have to be consistent and you have to be passionate about what you do. And in turn, that will make you successful. 
So I just uh, just continue to advertise and help my clients with um, whatever services they need. And I just keep going from there. And how long did it take um, to manifest success? Your definition of success? How did it how long did it take to manifest in your life with your business? Well, I haven't finished my success, but I have from from the time um, from hair school, it only took me seven months. After the seven months, I, I did go into a salon, I, um, actually two salons, to see how they managed. And then from there, I opened, um, that took about a year, maybe two years. And then from there, I opened my own salon. And then from that, um, I would say two years from there, that's when I started the mobile salon. I've always had the idea of the mobile services, but in 2013 is when I actually started the mobile salon truck. And here it is, 2017. So I would say maybe about seven years total to where I am now, but I am still trying to reach the more goals. Okay. And, and what, is, what does that look like for you? What is that I've arrived type? Do you have that vision? Um, the uh, I have arrived was um, I did feel those that I want to reach. So I haven't gotten to that, that initial, uh, that the, the ultimate I have arrived. <laughs> okay. And Dewan, share with us, what is a daily or weekly habit that you do consistently that has given you the greatest success? Well, I treat my business as a nine to five because this is the sure that um, I'm sure that I am at the shop on time. Um, we're open from nine thirty to seven p.m. Um, I I just do the things that are needed to make sure that my business runs successful. So you have to be consistent. And is you said you're open 9.30 to 7. Is that seven days a week, five days a week? I am open seven days a week, Monday through Friday. It's 9.30 a.m. to 7. We take our last client at 7 p.m. On Saturdays, we are open as early as 8 a.m. We take the last client at 4 p.m. And on Sundays, we are open from 12 p.m. to about 4 p.m. and it's by appointment only. Okay. What is one valuable lesson you wish you knew before starting your business? Um, a valuable lesson. I've come across. Um, I, I I want to. I don't own the physical location where I am, and that's something that I should have thought about or felt uh, should have known. Prior to um, where I am, I think I think owning your own building, sometimes um, there are mishaps. So that's what I'm in the process of, process of doing, looking for my own location. So I won't have those situations with, uh, I guess, the landlord. <laughs> so is that what prompted you to do the mobile salon? Was it based on wanting to have a physical location, your own? Well, that was one of them. You, you have to have a physical location to own a mobile salon truck. The main reason was, you know, I didn't, it wasn't secure at times to always go into someone's home. So I brought the salon to them and they could come out to the truck. And then the second thing would be, I guess, the overhead or you being able to own your own property instead of having to rent. So what's working well for you now, Dewan, in your business? What's working now? What's working well now? Um, every, everything I would say is working well. I have a consistent um, client base. I offer specials all the time so if they are on any of my social media sites um they will always receive the discounts so i think discounts rewards um some free services people like so a lot of those um continuing to advertise and advertise our specials keeping up with our clients those those things are working so, Dewan, talk to a younger you. What advice would you give to a younger you? 
the advice I would give to a younger me. <laughs> um, again, instead of renting, I would have looked more into being able to own my own property. And I would have been at that location still instead of having to move. Because I've moved maybe three times where I had to continue to um, reach out to my clients to let them know where I was. So a younger me, I would have... Um, Instead of jumped into something and say, oh, this is the spot that I want, I would have hit and researched the locations and things like that and then able to own my own location so I wouldn't have to have gone, you know, have to have moved. That's the only thing. So give us three truths that you have learned in life or business so far. Um, one, you can't please everyone. I try to. Um, um, whenever a client sits in my chair, whatever they want, I, I, I try to, I give that to them, that service to them, um, that good, great customer service. Um, I do tell them sometimes if, um, things that they may want that they cannot, I, um, you know, I do explain to them, but I still please the client and make sure that they are happy. Um, the second one would be, um, I don't know. <laughs> Um, oh, that's good. So <laughs> who are the top two influencers in your life and what lessons did they teach you? I guess my parents are the top influence in, influences in my life. Both of my parents are teachers. Um, taught me um, how to uh, how you treat people is is, is um, how you want to be treated is how, is how you treat others. That's one. Always be polite. Always be consistent. I guess that's about all. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what would they learn about me that I don't know? No, what would they learn? What would our audience learn about you? If someone wrote an autobiography about you today, what would information would they learn about you in that autobiography that they don't know about you currently? Um, I do have a motto. Um, your style is always limited to your imagination. I I want to make sure that when you're sitting in my chair and I finish with the service, you have a smile on your face. So we're going to switch gears because you've talked about consistency. You've talked about pleasing your clients. Tell us the worst moment in business and what was that takeaway? The worst moment in business with me was renting, renting from um, an establishment. I don't want to say the name, but it was a month to month lease. I entered into it because I thought it was a great location at the time. And they, um, once they saw me build my clientele, they changed everything and wanted me to pay double the rent. And then it uh, led me to have to move to find another location. That's why I, I said in the beginning, if if I would if I could start all over again, I would just look for something where I would not have to pay rent. I would pay a mortgage. So it 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 hindered me because it kind of had me to have to go back and try to gain all of my clients because some of them didn't know where I had moved to and things like that. So and so what was your takeaway? I know you had talked about owning. How did you um, recoup that database and what did you do about that to keep in touch with your clients with social media and various apps and things? Have you put a process in place to keep in touch with your clients? Yes, I do use a program that... Um um, has a, an appointment book attached to it. You can book online. So I do have a client ba a database where I can reach out to them to them by newsletters, uh, their emails and text messages all the time. So I kind of it, it it led me to have to make manual calls, and sometimes people's phone numbers were disconnected, and I moved, and they didn't know where I moved to. Those were the only issues. But by continuing to advertise and just keep putting your advertisement out there on social media, they'll 
begin to or or Google you. Google is really good. They can Google mm-hmm. me and find me. So what is a technology tool or technology platform that is a must have for you in managing your business, Dewan? Um, being able to book my clients online, being able to um, accept, you know, a, f- a form of payment other than cards. Um, the program that I use would be Stousey, and that has um, uh, marketing tools. You have, you can do newsletters. You send out reminders, text messages, and things like that. So I, I really like that program. So how do you balance or blend your personal life, family life with your business? Well, I have two older children. They're 27 and 18 right now. So um, I don't, and and I'm single. So (laughs) I go to work, go to the shop and I go home most of the time. So it's, it's, it's easier for me right now. So are they in the business? Do they help out or do they do something completely different than what you're doing? Well, my son is a security officer for the government. My daughter does um, help me at times. She's now in college, but when she comes home, she helps me as a receptionist. And I have taught her how to do certain things that don't require a license. So she does help out in that way at the salon. So here on Black Entrepreneur Experience, what we do, Dewan, is we shine the light on the most successful Black entrepreneurs in the world. And our objective is basically to just, like we said, to really promote and give exposure to Black businesses all over the world. And the other part of it is to recycle dollars into our community as well as to inspire others that look like us to become entrepreneurs. So what role or responsibility can you personally take or have you taken, Dewan, in reference to inspiring others that look like us to become entrepreneurs? Well, I do have young ladies um, who I um, allow to come to the salon um, who are interested in being stylists or nail technicians, and I do allow them to come into the shop and work hands-on. So I have a um, program where I teach those, myself and another stylist, how to do certain things that don't require certification at the time. Is there anything else that you're doing in your business that um, that's socially conscious that you give back to the community? Yes, I have. there's a program that I offer to veterans. We offer free services to the veterans. For men, we offer free haircuts on Mondays and Tuesdays of every week. And for the women veterans, it's uh, free shampoo and style Mondays and Tuesdays every day of the week. As, um, also, we, we offer free wigs to those who have hair loss due to cancer as well. Oh, beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. You're welcome. Joanne, talk to the person in our audience. They want to start a business, but they're fearful. What advice would you offer them? Go for it. (laughs) Um, No, just do it. Don't, don't. um, If that is your dream and your passion, just just do it. That's all. I don't know. It's what Nike says. Just do it. <laughs> Absolutely. And one of the one of the barriers that I don't know, I know it it's is finances. And so tell our audience, how did you finance your business? Did you bootstrap your business? Did you have a a nine to five that you used to finance your business? Did you go after venture capitalists or individuals, family, friends, um, or communities or um, other ways that people are financing their business like a kickstart campaign? Tell our audience, how did you finance your dream and your business? I actually financed my business from a nine to five. Um, In the beginning, I worked at Gaylord National at the National Harbor right here in Oxon Hill. I worked in their salon and I worked there for about two years. 
And during those two years, I saved my money. And then I opened my salon in the D.C. area. Um, after that, I, I, I also became a armed security officer. So I did that early mornings from 5 a.m. to 1. And then I would go into the salon about 2.30 and work until about 7. So I, I did it through a 9 to 5 job. I've never um, applied for any type of loans or anything. Would you recommend to the audience, if you had to do it all over again, would you say you would use that method to finance and grow your business? Yes, but I also would look into the programs that they offer now as well. Um, They have programs with the um, of commerce. Um, I've seen... I've seen emails that come to my to my email address for for business loans and things like that. I'm, I would I would do all of that. I I would also do Kickstarter. I've heard of Kickstarter. I thought about doing that as well. Now and there's another program. I can't think of the name of it. It's similar to Kickstarter, the name. But I think I think those programs will be good. That's it. Yep. GoFundMe. Yes. That's similar to Kickstarter. And do you know anyone that used those platforms and were successful in raising funds? No, I don't know anyone has that has used those. So, Dewan, tell our audience, what book would you recommend and why? What book? I did read um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That was a good, a, a good book. And to anyone. Okay, that's good. And why would you recommend that book? Um... Yeah, it has um, it has a lot of values and good points in in that book. It shows you how how um, someone who wants to be an entrepreneur can and the things that they need to do to be successful. Absolutely, and it and it talks about the um, actually the entrepreneur or the money mindset that is so key and profound in reference to managing and building a successful business. Yes. So what are your goals for the future with your brand and your business? My my goal that I'm working on now is to franchise my business, the mobile truck. That's the main goal. I am also doing a reality show based on hair dilemmas. So I have two goals right now that I'm trying to reach or that I will reach in a um, she's the reality show on hair dilemmas and the franchising of the mobile truck. Now, is that on on um, the reality show for the hair dilemma? Is that national or is that local in your area only? Um, right now, we are looking. It, it's national, but hoping to pitch it to the networks, and it can be um, for everyone. And how did you get that opportunity for the reality show? Everyone's big on reality television. So I would be remiss because my audience would probably say, why didn't she ask Duan? How did she get that opportunity? So how did that come about? Can you share with our audience? Well, it's something I thought about. Things that have happened in the salon. Um, I have clients that have gone to someone else um, that messed their hair up. I have clients that have, um, instead of allowing us to color their hair or bleach their hair or relax their hair, they try to do it themselves and they messed it up. And I said, huh, I could do a reality show where I can, um, we can do a glam makeover on a ha- on their hair dilemma. So what they have to do is write a story. And we, um, we the stylists, will read that story. We talk about the things in that story. And then we reenact and then we do the service the correct way. So it's almost like botched. Yes, but it's hair. Yes. Uh (laughs) Very good. That sounds like a great show. So if you had to do it all over again, Dewan, would you do the same business, the same industry? And you did talk about some of the, um, the lessons you've learned we know that you would definitely own versus renting, but would you go into the same business? Yes. I love making people happy. I love making them over 
and making them feel good about themselves. Um, I just have a passion to do hair. I've always done it since I was a little girl. I used to do my own hair, play with my Barbie dolls. <laughs> so when I can actually do someone's hair and they turn around in the mirror and they have a smile on their face it makes me feel good. So I would continue to do the same thing over and over again. So the city, state, county that you launched, was that the best area for your business? Um, I, I would think so. This is the area that I grew up in, but I do plan to move to another location, maybe Arizona and start a, a franchise, you know, another mobile salon truck there, or maybe even, um, well, you can't do it in Atlanta. There, there's some states that you cannot have a mobile salon truck. So you would have to research that. So who are the black entrepreneurs that inspires you to keep going? Um, black entrepreneurs that keep going hmm that's a good question <laughs> Oprah Winfrey is a good one but <laughs> and Oprah what Winfrey. what was the outcome um I haven't gotten a response yet <laughs> yeah we believe it's coming all right Oprah yeah, if you're listening <laughs> contact Dewan that's right she's waiting on you yes so tell us about how did you decide to name your business? Uh, I was trying to think of a catchy name. Um, uh, so I, I, I was thinking, I, I was writing all these different names down and then I figured Salon Dewan rhymes. So I said, oh, that's what it is. Salon Dewan. <laughs> and then the truck is named The Glam Shop and D-E instead of The is Dewan, so the glam shop. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. That's pretty clever. Thank, Thank you. you. So share with our audience a parting piece of advice you want to offer. Um, if you are wanting to be an entrepreneur and there's something that you want to do, just just do it. Change if if um you're um if you don't have the funds, so you can always start doing free services. I do a lot of free services. Just get your name out there. Do your do the services to let people see your work. Um, just go for it. That's all I say. Don't let anything hold you back if that's what you want to do. So, Dewan, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question that you would have asked yourself and I would like you to also answer that one question. If I would ask the question, I would ask myself and then answer it. Um, I'm always thinking of, um, I guess the question would be, how can I be more successful? I think about that every day. But as I said in the um, earlier, um, I'm still trying to reach two goals. And that is to um, con franchise, finish the franchise. And um, that that would be my question. How can I be more successful? Every day I'm thinking of other, other ways to be able to help people, make them beautiful. So now we've come to the part of our interview. It's called Fun Facts Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you, Dewan, a series of questions. I'd like you to give very quick answers. If it's something that you choose not to answer, you can feel free to say pass. Are you ready for the lightning round? Okay. The last movie you saw? Um, get Out. You relaxed doing what? Um, sitting by the water. Your favorite singer or rapper? Uh, Lauren Hill. Your favorite dance song? Dance song, dance song. Um, I don't know. I like all song. I like all music. <laughs> what food you eat every week, no matter what? Lobster. And your favorite month? May, my birthday. And that would be May the what? Just the date? May 4th. May 4th. Thank you for that. You know what? Dewan, share with our audience, and this is not a fun fact, so take your time. What is the best way for our audience to connect with you and to support your business? The best way to reach me would be through social media or Facebook, you can find me under Dewan Andrea on 
uh, Twitter, you can find me, Dewan Andrea or Salon Dewan. Also on Instagram, it's Salon Dewan. Or you can just Google me, Dewan the Hairstylist. Everything pops up. And that would be D E J U A N Burns B U R N S or D U J U A N and then it's A N D R E A. Did I get that correct? Yes, D E J U A N A N D R E A. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's a wrap. Um, we want to thank you for on Black Entrepreneur Experience for joining us and spinning. Um, time with us and anything that we can do to support your business don't hesitate to reach out and let us know thank you for having me and thank you thank you thank you for listening and subscribing to black entrepreneur experience we would love for you to leave a review and rating on itunes and share with your friends for show notes and more episodes go to www.beepodcast.com Join us next Wednesday and remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.